Welcome to Aggregate, an open source Python package for solving actuarial problems with aggregate probability distributions. This video will explain more about specifying frequency and severity components. And again, I'm working in the Jupyter Lab environment and I have already installed uh, Aggregate on this system. So we need to start by uh, importing uh, our build object and our quick display function as usual. And I'll remind you from one of the earlier videos we looked at, um, build comes with a list of programs built in that you can look at with uh, uh, knowledge. And uh, you can search it with a, with a pattern. And I happen to know that uh, there's a, a number of examples for frequency distribution. So if we search for all of the examples that include a frequency component, uh, we get the following list. And uh, let's just go through what uh, some of these are. So we've got a fixed number of claims, it's fairly self-explanatory. You want precisely one, two, three, or in this case, 10 claims, you can specify it in that way. Uh, we've got Poisson, we've already seen that. So uh, Poisson distribution, uh, 10 claims. Uh, we've got a Bernoulli. Uh, with the Bernoulli, you set the p-value as the parameter. So the number of claims has to be a fraction between zero and one. Uh, we have the binomial distribution. With the binomial, um, you set the number of claims as usual in the uh, exposure clause, and then you set the p-value as your uh, as an extra parameter that comes at the end. We haven't seen that, so an extra parameter here, and it figures out n so that the mean is n times whatever the p here. So in this case, n would be 20. 20 times a half would give us the 10 claims. Uh, the geometric distribution takes no additional parameters. And then other ones, are, I'll just highlight, there's a number of mixed distributions. So the negative binomial that I'm sure we'll know about um, is in fact a gamma mixed Poisson distribution. And the way you specify that is that you, um, include here uh, mixed gamma, and then you give the parameter 0.65 as the coefficient of variation of the gamma distribution. Uh, so a number of studies um, estimate what the coefficient of variation of different lines of businesses uh, uh, is, and they express it in terms of CV. So it's, it's convenient to be able to put the answer in terms of a CV. Uh, the Delaporte uh, mixture is a shifted gamma. So the first coefficient is the CV and the second coefficient is the shift. Uh, what this does is it ensures that there's a sort of minimum loss ratio. So there's a, the minimum number of claims will be 25% of whatever the um, uh, requested number of claims is. So it makes the distribution somewhat more skewed. Um, we can mix with an inverse Gaussian distribution, which is not quite as thick tailed as a, a log normal, but a fairly uh, a, a, a nice skewed alternative to the gamma distribution, um, a shifted inverse Gaussian that works the same way as the Delaporte distribution, and then a couple of other uh, seashell uh, mixture distributions. And then finally, a, a, a beta mix. So we can uh, uh, specify the mixing distribution as a beta with parameters uh, alpha and beta. If you want to see what these look like, uh, we can just uh, quickly execute them all again using the show command will execute each of these um, and we can see uh, the, the program that's been made. In each case, the severity component is just a fixed distribution of one. So there's nothing interesting going on on the severity. This is all about frequency uh, distribution. So let's just look at a, a few of these. So um, Poisson, kind of as expected, nice uh, tame distribution, relatively low uh, CV. Um, Binomial in this case, so this is a binomial with a mean of 10 and a p of uh, a half. Um, so that's a, a symmetric distribution. Um, geometric, so somewhat longer tail distribution. You can see the CV is, uh, is much higher there, uh, 1.04, as opposed to here, it's about a, less than a quarter. Um, talk about the so our gamma distribution with um, the get the uh, CV of your gamma mixed Poisson is slightly higher than the gamma that you requested. As the mean gets higher and higher, the CV will converge down to the CV of the mixing distribution. So in this case, with 10 claims, we're getting a CV of 72%.
even though we, we requested or the underlying mixture has 65% because the Poisson component adds uh, some uncertainty in there as well. Um, and then so forth down, down the line. So then uh, let's look also at the uh, severity distributions. So the sevs. Okay, so the general rule here is we have available to us all 0, 1, and 2 shape parameter distributions from SciPy stats, um, which is a very broad uh, list of distributions that are available to us. And then moreover, for each distribution, you can alter the scaling factor and the location factor. So let's just look at a few of these. In this first example here, we've got uh, severity is exponential. So the exponential distribution has no, no parameters because it, it, it only scales. It doesn't uh, change shape. And if you want to alter the scale, you multiply by 100. So this first example would give us an exponential distribution with mean 100. And the 100 times at the beginning here is acting as a scale factor on the distribution. Uh, if you can feel free to put a parameter in for the exponential, but it'll, it'll ignore it. Um, the second thing you can do is you can shift the distribution. So this is going to give us a distribution that, that have a scale of 100, and it'll be shifted to the right by 10. So it would actually have a mean of 110. Uh, the normal distribution also has no parameters. It just has a scale and a location. So this would give us a normal distribution with a standard deviation of 100 from the scale and a mean of 500 from the shifting. Uh, the uniform distribution uh, also doesn't have any uh, parameters because it's just a uniform 0, 1. This is going to give us uh, 100 times uniform 0, 1. So that'll go from 0 to 100, but it'll be shifted to the right by 50. So it'll go from 50 uh, to 150. Uh, the first sort of interesting one with a shape parameter here is the gamma. So we're going to input the shape parameter on the gamma, which is the exponent that applies to the x variable. Um, and then in this case, we're going to multiply it by 10 as a, a scale factor. Um, you can also, for two parameter distributions, request them by specifying the mean and the coefficient of variation. And it will figure out what shape parameter it needs to hit that uh, set of uh, input requests. So this is going to be a gamma with a mean of 12 and a CV of 0.3. Uh, you can do the same thing here with the log normal distribution. Um, there is a little bit of math available to you on the uh, in, in, in DECL here. So DECL allows you to do exponentiation, um, division, and powers, um, which is just enough uh, to uh, figure out the, the correct mean for a log normal. So if you want a log normal with a mean of 50, um, then you uh, um, can uh, in, input it to, as, as follows. Uh, but obviously much easier to do it uh, like this. But here, uh, when you do log normal 0.3, the, the sigma is uh, 0.3 that's coming in there. So then we've got an inverse gamma. We've got a, a Weibull here. We've got an inverse Gaussian. Uh, this example is the Pareto. It's a little tricky to do a normal Pareto where you, you've got a survival function of lambda over lambda plus x to the alpha. Lambda is the 10 in this case. Alpha is 2.6 and you scale the SciPy stats Pareto 2.6 by 10, and then you shift it back to zero to get the, the, uh, the lambda over lambda plus x parameterization of the Pareto. The beta distribution, alpha and beta, the two parameters, and again, so that's going to be between zero and one, multiply it by 50, and then shift to the right by 10 for scaling. Um, we've got our DSEV construction for doing discrete distributions. So this will this uh, construction here will allow us to say, I want outcomes 1, 10, and 40 with probabilities 0 0.5, 0 0.3, and 0 0.2. So very flexible if you happen to have some specific uh, outputs that you're looking uh, to hit. Um, and I think the rest of this is, is, is about the same. Then we've already seen that we can apply a limit and attachment or the examples I've given so far have, have had a zero attachment, but you can have an excess attachment like this. And then you can kind of mix and match. If you want unlimited cover, you can use inf. Um, so if you wanted to just put a, a deductible on, you could do inf x of uh, 10, for example, here would be, would be like putting a deductible of 10 on. 
Um, and then you can also, the exclamation point here is making things uh, unconditional. So this row here asks for uh, 200x of 10. It asks for five claims from the 200x of 10 layer. So conditional on it's made it into the layer. So the severity is conditional on being greater than 10. If you put the exclamation point in, the um, severity is not conditional on greater than 10. It's just conditional on a ground up claim. So this will be uh, lower. So we can uh, build all of these if we want to take a look at these guys uh, and just see if uh, some some highlights of whether this is coming in as we would think. So exponential with mean at 100. Um, on a log density basis, it's just a straight line. The exponential is actually the sort of borderline between thick claim, thick tailed and, and thin tailed in many ways. And it's a sort of surprisingly thick tailed distribution. It can be quite awkward to, to work with. Um, this is an example where we've done the shifting and you can see the, the shift here uh, ever so slightly on the, the left hand side. Um, here's our normal distribution. Okay, so the normal distribution obviously has support across the whole real line from minus infinity to infinity. And what we do is any negative values get bucketed into the first bucket. So that's why we've got a bit of a, a spike up there on the very left hand side. That's all the negative claims are going. They're just being truncated and, and put, to, put to zero. Um, the uniform distribution. So this is uh, 100 times the uniform plus 50. So it starts here at 50 and it goes to 150 and it's a uniform in between. Um, this is doing two claims, so a fixed two claims. So it's going to give us a triangular distribution and it's going to go from 100 to 300. So the severity here is the orange and as usual, the uh, blue is the uh, aggregate uh, distribution. And we've got our, our gamma distribution. And I'm not sure if there's any others here that are worthy of comment. Inverse gamma, very thick tail like the log normal. It's a uh, concave for uh, concave up. Uh, the Weibull distribution you input using the SciPy stats Weibull min uh, condition. The inverse Gaussian, uh, not uh, concave up, not quite as thick tailed as a log normal. Um, the Pareto, obviously very thick tailed. This one has a mean and a CV, but not a not a skewness. This skewness is coming out as uh, infinite. It'll compute something because we truncate it in the routine. So it'll have an empirical skewness, an estimated skewness, but it doesn't actually have a skewness. And then our beta distribution here, 50 times the beta plus 10. So it's shifted to the right by 10 and goes from uh, 10 to 60. And then our uh, histogram, 1, 10, and 40, taking values here at 1, 10, and 40 is where the jumps are. The first jump is a half, 0.3, and 0.2. Um, and I think that's probably uh, all that's worth uh, worth commenting on here. Um, so I will end uh, with that. But uh, again, you can look at the SciPy stats manual. Any of the zero, one, or two parameter distributions are available to you. It's kind of up to you to use them uh, responsibly and to choose the parameterization correctly on the one parameter distributions using the form where you input the mean and the CV, it uses a numerical algorithm to back into the required shape parameter, and it's not wholly reliable. It, will, it works pretty well. It works very well for um, we, the, the, the gamma is actually done analytically and the log normal and the beta are done analytically, and it'll work for some other distributions, but it's really up to you to check, and you need to give it a bit of a hand and uh, maybe do the parameterization yourself if you want to use some of the more esoteric distributions. Thank you.